Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Kristen, and welcome to this edition of Abbey Research Reads. We are today talking about Susan Stryker's book, Transgender History, which is pretty much the definitive work on the history of the legal and cultural transgender movement, especially within North America. So therefore, if you're interested in understanding queer history on any level, this is a must read. But even beyond that, I'll tell you it's a must read because Susan Stryker is one of the rare academics who has a real gift for explaining things that doesn't make anyone feel dumb. She's very authentically herself all the time. She's very clear about this is my experience with being trans and the particular time in history in which I, I transitioned and all of those kind of things, especially when she's in Talking Heads. Uh, I saw her most recently in the Pride documentary that we're covering here on um, Abbey Research that's coming out from FX and Hulu. She was also in the HBO Max uh, documentary, The Lady and the Dale, uh, talking about the reality of being trans in the 70s in the United States. So great. Overall, two thumbs up, gold star to Susan Stryker as somebody you can trust. The thing I really love about this book, I'll be completely honest, is that the first entire chapter is called Concept, Context, Concepts, and terms. Every term that you would want to understand about the alphabet soup that we use to describe queer life is in this book. It's also continually updated. Uh, this is the revised edition. Let me, this is the second edition. So let me double check when the first one was published. So it was first published in 2008, published again in 2017. And I would guess that she'll continue to update it as we get increasing science, increasing cultural things, in, increasing such stuff. I really, really appreciated that after that, then that kind of like she talks about the term intersex and what it meant and what it means and, um, you know, what the homophile movement was in the 1950s and a lot of things like that. And then she goes on to just break it down decade by decade. And I really do think that in terms of social movements of marginalized folks, decade by decade approaches of the 20th century is quite important. When you look at the culture of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and aughts, there are dramatic shifts. I don't know if I feel like there's massively dramatic shifts from like the late aughts to the early tens, but the emergence of smartphones kind of really messed around with, with how we saw cultural evolution and connection and social media and everything else. But those last six decades of the 20th century all had very distinct historical contexts and cultural definitions and experiences. So the fact that she took it decade by decade, just like the Hulu thing is doing, and it wouldn't surprise me to find out that they did that because she told them to, um, it's it's really important and really helpful. I know I get quite, the, the number one question I get asked, I should say, these days is why are pronouns so important? And if you are somebody who is asking that question and you wanna go beyond the answer that we give, which is they're important because they're important. They're important because we need to understand gender as a evolutionary entity on the planet and not the binary that we've been told it is. And people get to use whatever pronouns they want for themselves and we need to give them the right to tell us and the respect and the space and the trust to tell us how to refer to them. It's no different than someone telling us to use a nickname or not to use a nickname. We're very respectful around that. Why can't we be respectful around pronouns? If you want a deeper dive into emotionally why pronouns are so important for people, it's a great stop. We'll also link below to a conversation that I had with non-binary writer Diana Anderson earlier on in this calendar year on our Welcome to My World series where they were very generous in explaining their transition from a traditionally binary female presenting person to their identity as a non-binary gendered person and how they've walked their friends along that journey and some really great tips that I think could help you. If you want to, again, but if you want to dig deeper past Diana's conversation, uh, past some stuff that you see on the internet, get this at your local independent bookstore and dig on in. It's accessible, it's incredibly well-researched, and it's really helpful. As always, the links will be below to bookshop.org so you can find the best place to buy it to support, um, not Amazon. <laughs> and that's it. We'll be back next time with another book that I'm hopefully will recommend. I'm not entirely sure what's up next. I can't remember the calendar, but no matter what, we'll see you next time for Abby Research Reads. Bye.